So, spawning in the top left position as the Red Zerg. Playing for Team Infused. Flirting a little bit in the chat, we do see Jamesykins. And down in the bottom right position of Akalon Wastes, representing Raw Gaming. I saw him at I-48 in a lovely dinosaur suit. It's Famut. <laughs> that was really cool, actually. Like, there were, I think, four dinosaurs running around the hall. Um, yep, they were all four, from Raw. Yep, Raw Gaming showed up in massive dinosaur onesies. And I was actually slightly sad that they didn't have a spare for me. But I had a picture with them. It was it was pretty magical. Like when you see sexy dinosaurs <laughs> running around, you you've got to know that you're at a LAN event. That is true, actually. I think uh, I series is the LAN event uh, for having yourselves a good time. They were playing all their official matches in the dinosaur onesies as well. They were probably going at it all weekend. It must have been really warm though. Oh they goodness! Were, they were wearing clothes underneath the onesie as well. So they must have been sweltering. Uh, as opposed to, what, do you normally go naked under a onesie, Adam? Tell all. Oh, yeah, completely. All the way. <laughs> so, sometimes I don't even wear the onesie. Well, you, there's no webcams now. How do you know I'm wearing clothes, Yorisa? <laughs> That's what people ask me when I cast Dreamhack medals, and to this date, they've never received an answer. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. And uh, to be fair, it's it's the joys of working with webcams at a desk. Is you, you <laughs> know whether you're wearing trousers or not. It's up to the mind's eye. But yes, in terms of this game, they're going for very different openings. Jameskins went for a much earlier hatch than Fumit at the moment. He's also getting, the, but Fumit is getting the gas a lot sooner, which just means an earlier speed, earlier banelings, earlier roaches potentially. That's right. This is. Uh... In theory, this can pet uh, peter out to the same kind of opening once you get to about the six minute mark. Uh, the earlier hatchery means that you can get those earlier uh, earlier additional larvae. It means maybe you can start creep spread just a tiny bit sooner, but of course, you've delayed your gas a little bit as well. Conversely, we're going to have earlier zergling speed and therefore earlier map control coming out of Famit, which will allow him enough time to saturate his later uh, later natural expansion because he'll be putting a little bit of pressure from, on Jamesykins and potentially forcing Lings out from him as well. So, at the end of the day, I expect these openings to become a very similar mid-game. Well, ultimately, I, I want to touch a bit more about the fact that you're putting on pressure and enforcing Lings because even if the Zerglings, the six that Famit's got in production at the moment, even if they don't do damage to the drone line, if you force enough workers, you can drone heavily behind it. And that's something which always leaves the option for your opponent to overreact to what's coming at them. And especially after game one, where Famit went for such an aggressive play style, it could cause an overreaction from James Kins and therefore allow the Blue Zerg player to get slightly ahead in drone count. Now this is interesting, two lings coming straight up, ooh, into the main, and it looks like those six lings will force them back. Jamesikins, though, managing to find a way around, slightly careless from Famit, but uh, they will eventually get taken down. Is the Oh no, the queen's actually gone to the natural expansion at the moment, so no, they will go down anyway. So Jamesikins just getting a full scout off there, possibly checked how much gas has been mined, and crucially, saw that there were zero drones still in gas. That is a really important thing to know because then that just says there is not going to be any banelings. James Ekins does have his banelings on the way, but Famit has got so many Zerglings on the field already. 24 out. If we look at the drone count, it's now 21 to 16. That is a big advantage to James Ekins, assuming he doesn't take much damage from this, but the banelings are not going to be out in time. Yeah, he needs. Uh, Famit needs to get out there very, very quickly indeed. It looks like James Ekins might uh, potentially have to forfeit the natural here. She's coming out here from Famit, surrounding the Queen at the natural. That goes down. The rest of those links go down as well. And there are still links on the high ground to become Banelings. Five of them in total. But will they actually get out here in time? The Queen goes down. The links can go streaming in. They need to run away from those Banelings. And, oh, is he going to get a couple of them? It looks like he will. Two Banelings left. And this is looking a dire for Jamesykins. It is. James Akins has got 20 Zerglings in production, but Famut is just streaming more across the map. And currently on the field, it is 29 to just 9 in Famut's favor. That is giving him such a good advantage on the ground. The Bane is so essential to James Akins, literally just a few seconds too late. And this is looking really, really tough for the infused player. Main mineral line now being attacked. A lot of those drones going down as well. The worker count is 16 to 10, and Famit is looking like he might be able to wrap the rest of this game up right here. Remaining drones getting transferred to the natural, but additional Zerglings coming in. Oh, he's just doing so much damage. Even if James Ekins holds him off with these couple of links, which he will be able to do, the worker count is still 16 to 10, but another wave of reinforcements from Famit more or less puts him on even keel, and GG.
well played. That was indeed a good way to level out the series. Famid saw the advantage, knew he could go for it, and took it pretty